YouTube, how the heck you guys doing today? I hope you're doing good. I'm going to be doing another series on my Magic Lantern here and today I'm going to be covering a feature that I came across in the menus and that is called Dual ISO. Uh, it was also requested that I look into it by one of my commenters. So we are going to touch on that today. I've been playing around with it for about a week or so now. That's why this one is a little later than I wanted it to be. But uh, hopefully it will be interesting to you. It uh, was interesting to me. I like kind of how it turned out. It was pretty cool. So I hope that you find it interesting also. So let's go ahead and jump into the menus and I'll show you how to set it up on the camera. And then I'll show you what I did on my laptop here in the post processing. And uh, we'll just see what it goes. And I will be going over this uh, in future ones too because I did, like I said, I found it pretty interesting. Uh, as far as the outcome or output of the final result. So let's get started. All right, the first thing we want to do obviously is go into our camera on the 6D, get the sensor all cleaned up. I'm going to go into the menu for uh, the Magic Lantern, and it's already setting there at the ISO exposures and all that. But what we want to do is go all the way down to the modules which you'll see at the it's the third one from the very last module and you want to go down to dual ISO and turn that on and then let's go into Q and basically it tells you what dual ISO does it increases dynamic range by sampling the sensor at two different ISOs switching ISO for every other line pair this trick cleans up shadow noise resulting in dynamic range improvement around three stops at the cost of reduced vertical resolution, aliasing, and more. So that basically is what dual ISO is going to do for you. But you do have to do a post process, and you have to do a post process on these files with a tool called CR2HDR. And I will give you a link down below for that in the description. So let's go ahead and leave that on, and then once we go back to exposure, we can still see it doesn't show up in there yet. So what we have to do is close it out. Because anytime you add a module to the camera, you got to restart it. So it will load up on the next time around. Let the sensor clean up. We'll go back into there. And then there you can see at the bottom there is the dual ISO. And currently on and off. Let's go ahead and go into the Q button there and recovery ISO. It's currently sitting at 400, but if we scroll up here on here, you can see that we have anywhere from negative 6 all the way to plus 6 evaluation exposures. And then we have from 100 ISO all the way up to 6400 ISO. And what I originally shot the photos I'm going to show you at was at 1600, so I'm going to select 1600. I'm going to go back out of the Magic Lantern, and you want to go into the Canon setup now and go into the ISO speed. It's the third one across in the settings, and I have it set at 100, or you can set it whatever you want. A lot of people did 200 to 800 to get their range. Like I said, the photos I'm going to show you, I did at 100. So my two ISO ranges at this moment will be 100 to 1600. So once I had all those set up, I just went out, uh, took some shots in the backyard, did some shots inside the house here, and let me show you what uh, resulted in that. So after I got done playing around with the camera, I took some inside shots here, and I did some outside shots in the backyard. I went ahead and imported all these photos into Lightroom because the uh, C CR2 HDR is a plug-in for Lightroom. Uh, I believe uh, it's for Windows and Macintosh also. This is on a Mac obviously. But I believe that plug-in works for either version or platform for Lightroom. But when I went ahead and I did the uh, RAW files, I pulled in the RAW files and this is the original RAW file of just a scene inside the house here. It's close to, to my back patio door here. But as you can see, as I move in or zoom in, you can see all the uh, line spacing that goes on there because of the scan lines in that photo that's in the raw file. So basically, this is an unusable file as is. But when I move over and run it through the plugin, 
what you get is a very clean file. It uh, helped white balance the photo itself. Uh, it lightened up some of the dark areas. And the whites are a little blown out, but like I said, this is at 100 to 1600 ISO, so that's probably not the best photo, in, as you see in upcoming pictures. Uh, it's a lot better as far as quality on that. This is another shot inside the house. It's out of focus, obviously. It might look better on a small screen, but as you can see as I zoom in and out, it also has the lines as I go to the next photo. You can see that it's cleaned up from the previous one. The white balance has uh, been adjusted. You get a little bit more balance in the shadows and the highlights and everything. And as I move on to my next one, this was also the raw file that I had with the scan lines in it. You can see as I zoom in and out that gets really bad. And then this is the DMG file that you get from running the plug-in. As you can see on the previous one, it's got the little yellow tinge. You got some uh, shadows that aren't as noticeable. You get a little more detail in the shadows over there than you did before. Over in the kitchen you get a little more detail in the shadow of the uh, blinds that are on the window there. So let me go and show you one of the out one, outdoor ones that we did here. This is the uh, raw file with all the scan lines and everything. You can see it gets all crazy with the scan lines. And then the one before it is the one that the, is generated and gives you the DNG file. So it's pretty dramatic difference on those two. I mean, you get, you get a lot more detail and everything in the trees and everything. You get some more detail in the shadows of the uh, bushes and on the ground there. Although it does get a little darker in there, but you can also adjust that in developing. And if you notice here over on the keywords, after you run the plugin, it automatically assigns it keywords for dual ISO. And if I go to the one after it, it shows dual ISO RAW. And on my next photo, there's another dual ISO RAW. Uh, this one I did not run through the process yet, so we're going to go ahead and do that right now. As you can see, it's got the, all the scan lines and uh, just washed out coloring and everything. But let me go ahead and do an export with a preset. And as you go down, you will see once you've loaded the uh, plugin into your Lightroom program, you'll see the Magic Lantern dual ISO converter. So I'm going to run that. That's running up in the corner there. It says exporting one photo. It takes about a minute or so, so I'll wait till it comes back. So here we have that file originally that uh, has all the lines and the washed out coloring and everything. And then this is the file we just exported from it. As you can see, very well balanced much better look to it than the other one. So that is basically how you do it. It's just a simple export using the plugin and uh, it actually adds it right to your collection automatically. And on this next file here, which is the, another raw file that uh, is dual ISO. Oops, didn't mean go. You can see it's got the lines. It's all washed out as far as the uh, highlights and uh, everything not very good coloring at all and if I air over to the next file that is the file that's created to give you the DNG file as you can see it's got some very good coloring it's getting some good shadows and everything good range of tones and then if I arrow one more time this would be the actual raw file without any dual ISO it's just a straight shot of that same scene without the IS, dual ISO running. That is the converted file and then that is the dual ISO. So that is just a quick look on the dual ISO and Magic Lantern on my 6D here. Like I said I'm going to be uh, looking at it more and more in the future and bringing more samples back to you and things that I find out about it. But if you have any comments or questions about it please leave them down below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. And I will see you next time on the next Magic Lantern series or one of my other vlogs. And I hope you have a great week and upcoming holiday weekend. 
Have a good one, guys. Catch you later.